Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another exciting and educational career guidance interview. My name is Noglunga Machos, and I'll be your host on behalf of the Lerate Sakili Foundation. If it's your first time joining us, welcome to the family. And if you need any assistance with career guidance, applying to tertiary institutions, or even pursues, you are at the right place. Be sure to contact us via email, which is Lerate Sakili Foundation at gmail.com, or via our social media platforms, which I will leave at the end of this interview. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's guest speaker who holds a BTEC degree in environmental health, which she obtained at the University of Johannesburg following a national diploma in environmental health at Durban University of Technology. She also holds a BSc Honours in Environmental Management from the University of South Africa and is currently enrolled by the National Institute of Occupational Health as a Waste Assurance Officer, which is based in Cape Town. Prior to this, she has worked as an Environmental Health Protectioner um, for various departments, including Itaguini Municipality and Gauteng Department of Health. So she's here to tell us all all about environmental health. Please help me welcome the lovely Numtandazo Katsi. Good afternoon, Numtandazo. Hi, Nogulunga, how are you? I am very well, thank you. And yourself? <laughs> Thank you for having me today. <laughs> thank you for availing yourself. You know, you have a very busy schedule. So thank you so much for availing yourself today. <laughs> So um, without further ado, can you just please tell us a bit about yourself um, and the name of the course that you'll be talking to us about um, this afternoon? Okay, Unum Tanda Zukati is an environmental health practitioner by profession from KwaZulu Natal, Unkababa, which is in the south coast of Etegmimi. But I am currently based in the Western Cape. I am going to be talking about environmental health. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. And as you've mentioned that we'll be talking about environmental health, can you just share with us what this course is about? So basically, environmental health is part of uh, public health, but is more concerned on how both the natural and the built environment affects human health. So in simple terms, it's a practice of trying to avoid illness or or diseases or injury from, which may be which may occur as a result of anything that will be from the environment it also promotes uh, protection of the environment as well mm, and on that note um can you just highlight for us the subjects required to study this course you know for someone who is just um, matriculated which um subjects are actually required to study this course Okay, for environmental health, you will need to have English, physical science, mathematics, and life sciences. Oh, okay. And you know, I always say that um, having subjects required to study any course is not as important as the points required. So can you please share with us the points or rather the APS points um, required to be enrolled for this course? Okay, you'd need a minimum of 24 APS points. So it will mean you will need a level four for English, a level four for physical science, a level four for mathematics, a level four for life sciences, and a level four for any other two additional subjects that you may have, which will give you the minimum 24 points. Oh, oh, okay. And you know, for someone who is passionate um, about environmental health, but does not meet the minimum requirements, are there other alternatives um, to studying this course? Previously, we did have a foundation program, but I've been told that it, it's no longer offered by the institutions. So currently there isn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And um, can you share with us the institutions that um, offer this course? Okay, uh, with KZN, it is offered at the University of Technology, Durban University of Technology, Mangosuti University of Technology, in Gauteng, University of Johannesburg, Tswane University of Technology in the Free, free States, it's the Central University of Technology, Eastern Cape, it's the Nelson Mandela University, 
and in the Western Cape, it's the CPUT, Cape Peninsula University of Technology. Oh, thank you so much. Um, and, you know, as someone who has completed their degree in environmental health, can you please tell us um, more about the employability of this course? Employability. I can't say you are guaranteed 100% employment, mm -hmm. but graduating with this qualification offers you employment in the municipality, in various government departments, such as the Department of Health, Department of Labor, Department of Water Affairs and, and Environmental Affairs and Tourism. You can also work for industries such as the mining groups or food manufacturers, or you can even go as far as, let, let me make myself as, as an example, um, an environmental health practitioner, but because the scope for environmental health is so broad, the current institution that I'm working for, I am specializing in waste management, which is part of environmental health. You can go as far as even offering your professional services privately, where you open a consulting company, consulting your some of, 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 of the, the scope of, the, of environmental health. But in actual fact, the fact is some parts of the country would not have as many opportunities as some. So you must be willing to, to travel and on top of just having the qualification, you must be willing to travel where there would be opportunities. Mm, very well said. And you know, um, as people, we have many choices to choose uh, from, especially when it comes to choosing career paths. And one of your advantages is that your points allowed you to study any course, you know, that you wanted to study. So can you just share with us why did you choose to study environmental health? <laughs> Uh, truthfully speaking, I think I'm one of the people who would have benefited from programs like this, like how you are doing right now. So what happened was, I think I was in grade 11, and it was that time where we were applying through the central applications office, applying for, for tertiary institutions. So I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I had an idea. Fortunately for me, I have a big family, so we would from time to time bounce ideas around each other on like the available careers out there. And one of my sisters told me about environmental health and I got interested and she went as far as to getting me one of, one of her friends who was already in, in, in the field. And he, I think he's the one who sold me the idea of environmental health because we were having a conversation like how we are having a conversation right now. And he took me like he took me through what uh, what I will be studying and when I finish what opportunities are out there, which is quite similar to what was happening, what is happening right now. <laughs> oh, wow. So I guess you are, you are a lucky one. <laughs> yeah. So when the results came out, I was already prepared like I knew exactly what I was going to do. Oh wow. And um, thank you so much. Um, just to top up our interview, you know, for Elena who's thinking of considering environmental health, can you share with us some fun facts um, about your course? The program, like what? when you are doing the program. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you are doing the program, we had work integrated learning, which is where during holidays, you'll be placed in a municipality and you will be working under supervision of a qualified environmental health practitioner. And this is where you will get exposure. You are required to do a minimum of 100 days of this before you graduate. You, we also had a minimum of one trip a year during the program, like every year would travel and with speaking to some of my friends and colleagues who went to different institutions, they seem to have a similar arrangement within their institutions as well. As much as these trips were normally for educational purposes, for me, it, it was a plus because it, it offered me an opportunity to see some parts of, of South Africa that I wouldn't have gone on my own. And it also gave me the 
discomfort of, of, of having the idea of working in different parts of, of the country, not, not basing my, my comfort on to areas where I'm, I'm familiar with or where they speak mm -hmm. the language that I'm familiar with. Mm, quite interesting, um, but we've sadly come to the end of our interview. Um, thank you so much to our speaker, Numtanda Zukati, who's holding a degree in environmental health. So, um, Numtanda, before I let you go, can you just please um, tell us the best place for people to connect with you on social media? Okay, on social media, I am Numtanda Zukati everywhere. LinkedIn. <laughs> Numtanda <laughs> Zukat. Just Numtanda Zukat. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much. Um, and to our viewers as well, um, you can follow us um, at Lerata Sokili Foundation on Instagram. And you can also like our page on Facebook, which is Lerata Sokili Foundation. You can also follow us on Twitter at LSFNPO. LSFNPO. And you can also follow your host, Noblunga Machozi, on Instagram as Metigirl underscore Machozi. You can also find me on um, Facebook as Metigirl Machozi. Thank you so much to Ms. Numtanda Zakati for joining us today. Thank you to everyone for watching this video. Don't forget to come in to ask any questions that you have um, or even request any career guidance that you want on the comment section. And as the Rata Sokili Foundation, we promise to attend to those questions. Be sure to like this video and share, share, share. From um, this interview going forward, the Lerata Sokili Foundation will be posting twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday. So don't forget to tune in next week, Tuesday and Friday, same time, same place for another exciting career guidance interview brought to you by the Lerata Sokili Foundation. That's it from our speaker, Ms. Numtanda Zokazi, and myself, Nuglunga Majozi, on behalf of the Lerata Sokili Foundation. Good night. <laughs>